Here we go. I forgot to add myself to the stream. How are you doing? Konnichiwa minasan. It's Grey from Akazashi's Tea House over in Japan. I hope you're good. I hope you're Genki. I'm good, thanks. I've got a little bit of outside working noise in the background, so I might have to mute myself a few times. But yeah, great to be here. Great to see you all in the chat. We've got your barmies here. Angry Canadians lurking. Nerporeal life form. Not sure who that is, but he's in the chat too. We've got Nosferatu the vampire. Hey, how are you doing? Great to see you. And Jacob Ironside, mate, thanks for coming in. I really appreciate it. We were watching, um, actually, the English dub version. I think it's the second version on Nerporeal's Discord before we started. And for me, it's the first time to see the English dub. So that was that was fascinating to see that. Um, I always watch the Japanese one because, you know, I'm a, what do you call it? I'm a, a purist and all that. No, I'm not. I just, that's all I can get over here. I mean, I could order the American DVDs, but I get the Japanese version with Japanese subtitles. Isn't that weird? I can't even put English on, but hey, it's good for my Japanese, good for my practice. We also have Casey Charlie Chats and Gadfly Fiction. How are you doing? Great to see you. Nosferatu wants uh, me to do a karate kick. Karate. Maybe not. So before I go off on a, a big, huge wakizashi waffle, and don't forget to drop a waffle in the chat, um, let me bring in the guests. First of all, all the way from the US of A, we have, where are we? Canada! Canada! Canada Poriel, how are you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm, I'm so excited, as you can tell. I'm really hyped up for this. I've been on coffee all morning and I've got a cup of Earl Grey, hot, especially for you. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm excited. I honestly am excited for next week to, to see how this new season plays out despite how shitty the first two are but we're not here to talk about that we're not that's right we're not here to talk about star trek picard i'm so sorry number one uh, we have to going to talk about akira akira yeah and no we've got two more guests haven't we let me bring them in first of all all the way from the uk no i'm joking another um from the usa we have ronin ronin 66 how are you doing man doing great how y'all Oh, I'm very good, very excited, and it's great to have you here. Um, we've been kind of YouTube buddies through chats and things in the past, but it's the first time to have Matt on my stream, so I'm very happy about that. Yeah, I'm definitely happy to be here, man. Great, and if you haven't subscribed to Matt's channel, please do so, check it out, Running 66 Your life also will improve have... significantly if you do so. <laughs> this is true, this is true. We also it'll, it'll have... Be elevated. A bit of um, anime YouTube royalty, I believe. This is the one, the only, Brandon, the anime guy. Tetsuo! Canada! How dare you? <laughs> How you doing, Brandon? I am doing well. Thank you for having me here today. It's uh, it's always a good day to, to hang out with you, because uh, for you, it's Saturday, and for me, it's a uh, late Friday night, so... Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we're not here to talk the pew card. Trust me, I, I will. Yeah. No pew I'm card. I'm excited. I'm excited from what I heard. Just saying. Oh, uh, yeah. Another, another story for another day. But I watched this show for the first time in Japanese. See, Gary, see, Gray, compared to you, mm. I've only seen it primarily with the original dub that was done oh. on VHS and Laserdisc and the redub that Pioneer had done when they did their their uh, 20th anniversary DVD release. Okay. So I'm familiar with the original the most. The second, the newer dub, second. And then, of course, uh, today was the first time watching it in Japanese, but I can, I can honestly say I now understand the film front to finish. I always wow. was a bit confused with it, but now it is all clear to me. How's your Japanese, Brandon? Because mine, you know, this is crazy, right? I've been here for years and it's, mine's pretty terrible. My listening's good, of course. I can speak it fairly well. I'm not that mm -hmm. great at giving my opinion, most difficult thing, but reading and writing, mate, not good at all, I'm afraid. Yeah, I, I had a tough enough time with English and I'm actually pretty good at English. <laughs> Me too. Uh, but uh, trying, you know, going from twenty a 26 character, uh, you know, alphabetic, uh, uh, language to a you know thousand plus character script language no nah, it ain't gonna happen that, that that's out of the that's out of, but as far as my uh, uh, pronunciation and enunciation it is getting better but I still struggle with uh, with certain things okay that's good but it's getting better let me shout out in the chat your barmy very generous mate thank you so much for your support twin ceramic rotor drives on each wheel 
Mm-hmm. Oh my god. I've got to drop it's too much bike for you to handle, Tetsuo. Get off my it's bike. It's too much bike. <laughs> Let's have a little bit of bike action. Very brief. The animation uh, of that yes. fall and roll. Oh, my God. I'm just nerdgasming over it right now, guys. <laughs> As you should, because uh, there's nothing else that's ever been done like it. Nothing has even come close to this level of precision in traditional hand-drawn medium ever. I was forgetting it was hand-drawn. I was forgetting that because it's 1988, of course. You know, it's long before, like, the the advancements in CG. So unbelievable detail, isn't there? What do you think, Nerporeal? Let me bring you in, Nerporeal. Yeah, this was made, this was directed by the the author of the source material, the Katsuhiro Otomo. Ooh. And so you, he's gonna he's gonna do his best to make this you know make this as right as possible, and I'll be honest like this I mean this movie, it has it has a little bit of a mix of like my early childhood because you know, I used to watch a lot of you know animated movies and shows mm. in, in in the eighties uh, late eighties early nineties, so like especially the moment when the the guy's being chased by you know the guy's taking the the the, the, the kid Takashi I don't know if he's a kid. He's an old kid, I guess. Yeah, the old and, kid. And the, the dogs are after him. I swear, the first time I saw that, when he when the, when he shoots the dog in the face, I thought he was, for a second, I thought he was shooting, what's his name? Ch- uh, was it Charlie from freaking All Dogs Go to Heaven? I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> That's what it looked like to me for a second. Because I think All Dogs came, it went to heaven. It's, it's heaven a shocking scene, no point, isn't it? And, like, we're not condoning shooting dogs, by the way. We're not laughing no. at that. It's, but it's oh, an incredible no. scene, and it really gets you. It's It shocks you, doesn't it? It, it does yeah. like it's like it, it like it re- reminded me of just watching you know classic you know 80s animation but just with a a no it, it holds no punches this, this this movie there's this movie holds no punches and i wish prophet the dragon were here but there's a lot of broken glass in this movie <laughs> There is a ton of broken glass. He did not watch. He did not come and watch it with us. He was getting ready for work, but I said, "Dude, you gotta come and watch this for that reason." But I first saw this. I was getting into anime. Uh, Okay, a few friends of mine uh, when I was in college, early two thousands, were into anime. I started watching OG Gundam. One friend had a DVD. Well, I had another. We had another friend that we hung out with. And he's the one I was. We we're hang, I was hanging out with him. We were chatting, drinking coffee at eleven o'clock at night at a diner. You know, two nineteen, two twenty-year-olds talking, and he was telling me about this movie Akira. So I eventually bought the movie and watched it in my dorm when I was in college. I watch it and I'm like, "This is pioneer." So this was like a fifty-dollar used DVD. I paid a lot of money for it. At the Ooh. Time. Okay, so you first threw it on a DVD, yeah, not on VHS like me, yep. and then and then the screen. No, I'm, so I'm, not, I'm I'm young. I'm young. <laughs> you're not old like me. Yeah. Is that what you're saying, Nepoleon? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> but I watch. I'm watching this. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What this is like? The thing <laughs> that minutes. they the thing that they really like they they really um, establish is that you can die really easily. Like like thing like this is not like you know your cartoon where you know something falls on you and you're just like oh, oh you, know, you, just, you get just, up you no. have a big boo-boo on your head no the japanese don't, don't mess about it. they will show serious like gruesome death scenes in this let me before we go off on, on too much of a waffle because i'm the same it's hard not to when you're talking about something as good as akira let me bring matt into the chat so matt um briefly <laughs> how, how did you first find akira uh, I'll be honest, man. I, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch it on anything except for uh, TV because of uh, mm. being mm. down here in the South it's it, and kind of out in the sticks, too. You don't get stuff like this. Like, I mm. mean, I got into anime thanks to kind of Toonami and Fox for bringing okay. it over here. Um, but then, like later on, I think it was early 2000s, my parents decided they wanted to start paying for HBO. <laughs> uh, so they, Bonus. so we, we had a lot of, uh, we, I, we, I got access to a lot of more adult, much more adult content. And yeah, I believe I was homesick from school one day and I was just kind of flipping through the channels. I was like, I'm going to watch HBO and I, find akira and i mean i'd already been watching stuff off to monami like gundam and stuff and Mm. even though that stuff was kind of more giving more mature stories it still didn't do anything like akira did like it we were talking about the dog scene like that 
first opening Good i was God, just like yeah. i was drawn in from that moment and it just continuously gets better from there but yeah that was my my first uh, experience with akira was sitting at home watching it on uh, hbo about midday okay that's awesome. That's great to hear. HBO. I'll tell you what, I can't remember because you know, you know, I'm old. It must have been the UK for me on either BBC or ITV. We had the choice of three channels for so long, and then we got a fourth one. That's all we had. But I've seen it in um, the cinema. I saw it in a, an art house cinema in Manchester, and then one in Berlin when I was visiting my brother one year. That was great. So let me bring in Brandon. So Brandon, we're talking about how how we first got into Akira. How did you become aware of it? Well, I became aware of it back in the 90s. I, uh, when I started high school, I had a friend of mine who had an older brother who uh, was, a, a con- was a connoisseur of uh, anime and had a Laserdisc player. Oh, and nice. he had this movie, and we watched it. And yes, it was a, uh, an absolute mind-bending, mind-blowing experience for you know, a 14, 15-year-old, uh, <laughs> 14, 15-year-old kid. And then from there, it just uh, expanded into all sorts of other things through, uh, through the places that I used to work and, and all that. I just, I just knew a lot of people that, that had it, and it was just great. And of course, the Sci-Fi Channel, back at that time, that didn't suck. They had, uh, (laughs) yes, it used to be good. They had their Festival of Animation Week, and I would record every day of the week show. But uh, looking at the history of it, this did air on Sci Fi Channel back in like 93 or 94. They actually did the world premiere here in the U.S. for, for it. I'm going to ask you, Brandon, like you saw it on Laserdisc first. Now, I bet back then that was still really high quality for the time, yes. wasn't it? I believe that. I never had the player, but I used to hear from real, you know, real movie buffs that you're grey, you've got to get a Laserdisc. This is back in the days before DVDs, of course. Yeah, Laserdisc was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was another world of experience. Plus, it also helped that, uh, that this particular friend of mine, their, his, his father had money. So he had a monster. 40 inch Mitsubishi TV, not a, not a rear projector, the big kahuna monster. (laughs) Big screen. Oh, it was, it was huge. It weighed, you know, three times me at that time, but watching anything on that from that laser disc player was just, uh, just an, just an otherworldly experience. I've never watched a laser disc. Uh, is it the same quality as like a DVD or not quite? Not quite. Uh, the quality, the quality okay. on it was, uh, it was close. It was a 360 to 480i typically. So, mm-hmm. uh, better, better than VHS, better than Super Video or Super VHS, better than Beta. But uh, yeah. it, it basically is the the redheaded stepchild of the uh, the optical media family, considering that it was the size of a of a vinyl. Well, that's it. Know, that was, a, yeah, that's what was so cool about it. You it's got like, the you know, gatefold gatefold sleeve didn't you like a vinyl so you had a huge beautiful cover that you did yeah typically the artwork they put on those things were outstanding if you ever get a chance to see the Mm. original star wars releases on laserdisc the the artwork on them they're fantastic so okay let me briefly drop a another clip and by the way just let you know in the in the chat and who's watching um of course i had to take the music off on clips so i've used youtube audio maybe you know music on each one in case you're wondering like that doesn't sound like akira but i wish i could use the soundtrack because it's gorgeous isn't it it's mm-hmm. so cool you've got, you've got these huge drums beating you've got like chanting songs chanting the characters names it's so um, atmospheric but anyway before i start waffling here we go here's a brief clip near the beginning Influenced by Blade Runner, by any chance that that brief back back look at the city there. Mm-hmm. Did you see the but the the but the, the 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 place where they were holding Tetsuo? That was practically Tyrell Corporation. Like they, yes, they have used an anime, the Tyrell Corporation pyramid or whatever that structure in so many shows. They used it in this. They used it in Escaflone for the Zybok Empire. I'm oh, sure yeah. they've used it. I can't think of it, but I'm sure they've used it elsewhere. And like Blade Runner is very, very, very influential in anime and Japanese, uh, <clears throat> Japanese, uh, Japanese animation in general. So, 
I think it's cool that they've done that, you know, they're, they're not shy as well, they will admit it, the Japanese, yeah, they've been hugely influenced by Blade Runner, I mean, Blade Runner has influenced so many things anyway, but Ghost in the Shell, of course, as well, that springs to mind, apart from Akira. Did you Ma- see the, uh, did at- you see how Ridley, did you see the, the, the Ridley Scott uh, uh, stuff, like, uh, especially when Tetsuo is, um, is being terrorized by those kids and their toys, and oh, the God. teddy bear Crazy is scene. bleeding milk or sweating milk and everything. <laughs> Doesn't that make you think of Ridley? Like, that's something Ridley Scott would do. Who knew, like, seeing a teddy bear, a giant teddy bear coming towards you, like, yeah, like to say, like, pouring milk from its orifices would freak you out. Hey, it freaked me out. Let me bring um, Ron in, Matt, back into it. So... When you see the animation and when we compare it to stuff we watch today, now I know today's quality is really good and there are still hand-drawn productions out there, aren't there, as far as I know, uh, but they're kind of few, fewer than they used to be. Uh, yeah, I believe the latest season of Mob Psycho 100 just did an entire season completely hand-drawn and they apparently had an episode that had 20,000 frames of animation in it. Ooh. Oh my God. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. Talk about a hand cramp. <laughs> yeah, like, like, uh, what, what was it, Brandon? When you got the 4K, there was a article that had come out that somebody actually mm-hmm. wrote on the side of one of the uh, pieces of machinery, like, why am I putting so much effort into something somebody's never going to see? Yep, that is something that's only been revealed because of the 4K scan of this movie. It was finally clear enough to be read, and yeah, the whoever it was that was paid to do that, he's like. Why do I have to put so much detail into this one little thing that's only going to be on screen for a few seconds when no one's going to be able to read it? Well, we can read it now. Yeah. <laughs> and he was pissed. I mean, yeah, I mean, cool. it, it maybe shows a little bit of uh, think, like thinking on Otomo's part into that, you know, I want this to be as good as possible now because it might look better later on. Let me just address this comment in the chat. This is from Dempsey. It's so funny. I was just going to um, to share this image from the very opening of the film. I'm sure you're all very aware of this. So we open with uh, basically World War Three, don't we? Which has happened yeah. in 88. He's asking, what about the connection between the A-bomb and the giant explosions in anime of the time? Akira, for example. Oh, yeah. That's something that's massive within their culture. You know, you start talking about uh, the war and having the bombs dropped on them. Yeah, they're they're not afraid to show up, but they're also afraid to talk about it in some respects. So, yeah. yeah. Heck, I mean, you have the entire you have an entire franchise that was, you know, completely inspired by, you know, all the the atomic stuff. Godzilla. 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 Sorry, uh, two films that actually depicted it were uh, Barefoot Gin and uh, Grave of the Fireflies. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Grave of that that movie. Every time I watch it, oh my god, it makes me want to cry. It does, yeah. And I can't watch him. He's, he's a big hit I can't over watch here. Him. And they didn't even um, cover the atomic uh, stuff. They covered the napalm. It was a nap. The, there was napalm oh, attack. Okay. That, the, that movie covered. Oof. Guys, just let me shout out the chat. Keep missing this. Um, we had Salty Texas. Sorry, Salty Traveling Sea was saying he prefers the laser disc. It's the best way to watch Blade Runner. I'm not talking about Akira. So good here. Um, your Barmy saw the Fifth Element on a laser disc. I bet that was awesome, mate. I bet it looks nice. so good. Um, Monkey Jeebus is in the chat. Hey guys, great to see you. And of course, Zax is here. I hope Netflix does a cheap live action version of this. Where they're going to be make, talking no. about feelings. Don't make jokes. They're, they're going to be talking uh, about feelings. There's not going to be any action. I, it's going to be it's going to be wasting time. They're going to make it. They're, they've been they're, talking they're about it for eight years. episodes. Nothing's yeah. going to happen. But there's going to be there's going to be. Uh, a, uh, and it's all the white guy's fault. And yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hate to break it to y'all, but apparently uh, Taiko Watiti. Is attached to the live action version of this. Oh, like, kick that man in the balls as, as the director. Wait a minute, he doesn't have any. Never mind. You know who was <laughs> attached to? Like they've been trying to make a live action version of Akira for years, and Leonardo DiCaprio's name was like he was like one of the he was like a producer. I heard that like, the no longest yeah. time. No way. What do you think about Taika Waititi? There's only one word to say. <laughs> Well, he's gonna and I couldn't Otomo's, say it better myself. He's going to he's gonna destroy uh, 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 Otomo's uh, mythos in a minute, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For God's sake, don't, don't try Otomo, and make it. Don't make it. Leave it as it is, Nen Emporio. Just leave it as it is. It's perfect as it is, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, this is too. This is too toxic. This this would never fly by today's. Oh, never get made uh, today's, today in the uh, West. Modern in the West, Western, anyway. modern standards. Oh yeah, there's. Like, uh, look, look, there's... How, look how toxic these guys are. They're they're just they're mean. <laughs> look at that and, big pill on his back. Of his jacket. Edgy. You know, back in the day, back in the good old days when teenagers were edgy and used to get under adult skin all the time. <laughs> Laughing at Dempsey's Holy comment, Tetsuo is Tetsu led around by the hand of a trans Akira of color. There we go. Okay, let's <laughs> let's bring it back to a bit of um, a bit of serious. So, guys, this is where we first see the two these two characters. Who wants to take this? Brandon, let let uh, can you let people know? So, who are these two, and why is that guy got a fantastic pill on the back of his jacket? Well, if I remember correctly, the pill is uh, it's a uh, bad for you and. Why swallow it? So it, 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 there's some twisted meaning behind it, and of course, oh, yeah. uh, uh, Canada is uh, basically running his own biker gang, or as close to that as you get in uh, Japan. Yeah. But uh, his uh, fellow cohort here, I can't remember his name off the top. Give me just a second, and I'll be able to find I'll, it. I'll have, you, uh, I'll have a look. Oh, yeah, carry on. Yanagawa. I think was it, it Yanagawa? I think he was Yanagawa. Yeah. Yeah, Yamagata. Yamagata, Yamagata, that's it. Yeah. Yamagata. Yamagata. Nice so one. he's he's more or less his uh, left hand guy. They're just hanging out in this a uh, putrid dump of a bar, who I guess uh, does illegal things on the side, and they're uh, they find out that the clowns are on the move, or they've got them where they want them. So they're like, let's round up, roll out, and go smash some clowns. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I tell you what, this bar, I know it's, um, it's exaggerated, but I've, I've been in bars like this in Japan, maybe <laughs> maybe not recently, you know, in the 2020s, but they are there. I, it's the little details like that that just blow your mind. You know, the background, you see characters that are kind of kissing. The girl looks so bored. You see, you see, a, someone you like see, the, you see beer. a Doors album. You see like a Doors album. You or, do. Mm -hmm. the doors on, on there. I noticed that. Well, I see Cream. There's oh, the yeah, Cream album right there in between there them, is. so... Yeah. And of course, it's a, uh, a it's a CD player, which uh, uh, we don't is that really Led Zeppelin have anymore. in the middle. Oh, yes. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Oh my God, guys! Speaking of clips, I've got, I've got to drop another one because I prepared some again, all eight seconds long with original music on. But you talked about a biking clip. Okay, let me find one. Look at this one. This is so cool. <laughs> Again, it's the way that he falls off the bike. Just a little detail there. You see him hit the floor. You know, it's so cool. They're not perfect. They make mistakes, these characters. Amazing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. it is. Yamagata is <sighs> uh, my favorite, says Nosferatu. Cost efficient four door sedan. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So he's saying um, putrid dump of a bar. Does it have scum and villainy? Yeah, it actually does. It, it does. is quite. It's definitely very scummy. Very seedy. And yeah, they're they're pretty much all they're pretty much all villains in this uh, in this little tiny dive bar down at the bottom of the stairs. And then you get uh, Tetsuo sitting on uh, Kaneda's bike, mm -hmm. thinking, "Yeah, this thing is awesome. It's fully loaded, anti-lock brakes, ceramic propulsions, two hundred horsepower at twelve thousand RPM." He wants to be Kaneda. He wants to yep. be Kaneda. He wants to be Kaneda. Dempsey's going to call him Kaneda. So, he is so uh, insecure about himself that, yeah. he has to, that he has to do all this. Yeah, Tetsuo is very insecure. And in the original dub, it's uh, it's not uh, Kaneda. It's, uh, or it's, uh, uh, it's not quite Canada, but not quite Kaneda. It's Kaneda. That's how they pronounced oh, it in the I original know. dub. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Kaneda. Kaneda, yeah. Yeah, Kaneda, and then the second dub is Kaneda, and then, of course, in the Japanese, it's Kaneda. It's like people calling me nerd for real. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I mean, I love you, you guys, but shut up. It's the not nerd for real? Nerd yeah. For real? <laughs> I'm a well, real how long nerd. did it take, Coach, to get your name right? A long time, so. A very long time. <laughs> Let me bring I, had, I, had, I had to break down my name, nerd for real. <laughs> Guys, let me bring in Matt, running 66 again. So mm -hmm. um, this is one of the iconic shots of the cityscape. I mean, how much how much have you seen this in, would you say, dystopian sci-fi you know, movies? Does it just look familiar or what? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely gives me, uh, what was it, Fifth Element vibes. Yeah, uh, Fifth Element, Blade Runner. Uh, watching, watching that, you know. 
and I mean, I just again, I just love the detail that goes into all this because I mean, you, you got to think they drew every single one of these windows, every single one of these buildings. That's right. That's right. They just put so much detail to bring this to life. That's cool. Let me just go on to the next one. Here we look go. Look how large that building is. Just look how large. Look, look, like I like how we're seeing the city. We are seeing mm. the city intact before it gets completely destroyed. And well, you it's see not the it whole. Gets destroyed throughout the, not just at the end, but throughout the whole movie. But it's like, only parts of Neo Tokyo. Most of Neo Tokyo doesn't get touched. It's mostly the old city that gets completely yeah. wrecked. Or at least yeah. the area where they're building that, uh, the eventual stadium for the whatever Olympics, the 2020 Olympics in Japan. <laughs> uh, tw 2019, I think it was, was it not? 2019 was the year it was in, but it still was like 147 days out, so it oh, would have been the 2020. Right, right. Don't you think that's it was right. very good timing that they had very, uh, you know, they had, you know, student protests going on and around this time, you know, doesn't that, doesn't that sound kind of familiar? It, it certainly never does. Ends. Real. But guys, again, look at this, again, the detail, the colors, the colors and the level of detail. You, you're there, you're in there. Yeah, you could say, oh, come on, it's Blade Runner all over again, but it's a bit it more colorful cool. than the Blade Runner cityscape. It oh, yeah, a lot more for, color for, to it. For such a gritty film, this is very colorful. Like, look at, look, look at the choice of color right here. Yeah. Like, you got your awesome. pinks, you got your purples, you got your blues. I mean, you have red, you know, whites on, on the street. You got... You got yellow, I mean, green. I mean, this definitely looks like a more upscale neighborhood too, just with the fountains on the top of the buildings. Yeah, it's like uh, you ever you ever uh, watch uh, Metropolis, OG Metropolis, yeah, or the anime Metropolis. Hmm. Same idea where you have the rich are you know living above, you know Coruscant, you know, like Coruscant. The rich are living above, and the uh, the, the the shit birds are all living on the <laughs> bottom. <laughs> Pretty that is much. a divide. It's, they've made they made sure you can see that there's a huge divide, isn't there? You know the the abos and the belows kind of thing. Yeah, the plebs and the the elites. I've got a question from Nosferatu for us guys. Um, it's a bit early, but let's uh, let's see what he says. Where do you rank this in the cyberpunk universe? Is it a top three movie? Definitely a top three anime as far as top three within the cyberpunk or dystopian nightmare future. Uh, I'd probably put it closer to a top five, mainly because unless unless you are a connoisseur of anime and, and understand some of the idios idiosyncrasies within the Japanese culture, you're going to miss a ton of things. As I said, I watching this in Japanese for the first time, I got so much more out of it than I ever did with any of the dubs, mainly because I was paying more attention but it just worked better. And speaking yeah. of, uh, here's the 4K, the beautiful box that it came in. I gotta just make that. you big screen for a so second, Brian. I, I've, yeah. I've heard the 20th criticisms edition VHS or DVD. Ooh, look at that. And it came with this handy dandy little pamphlet book. Ooh. Yeah, this is. There's two. Uh, there's two 4K releases of it. One of them they didn't do the HDR10. This one they did. And it's the one to get. So is it worth Besides it? The DVD. Is it worth the uh, is it worth the purchase? Oh, absolutely! It wasn't expensive. I, I, it was only like uh, twenty five, thirty bucks. It's I'm absolutely gonna worth it. it. I'm gonna have to buy it. Dang it, Guys, Brandon! This, this scene here, how iconic <laughs> is this? When uh, when he just like skids the bike. Oh my god! How many times has that been in imitated? <laughs> Right. <laughs> there is actually a Man. video on YouTube that shows how many times this has been used in animation oh, really? <laughs> and in real life. Yes, it's about a 16 minute video. I mean, it's, it was like literally like this. They're like they're like the, 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 he's facing off with that one dude there. And he, he just he did. They, they're like practically right next to each other like this. And he, he, he does that. And the other dude falls off off of his bike. It's yeah. so awesome. Just to, just seeing it. the motion and everything, the the way that the way they animated, the way they got all the motion down really well, the the, the physics and all of it, it looks amazing. When they go head to head, when they play chicken mm -hmm. in the middle yeah, of the yeah, road, yeah. That's and they exactly get on the white line, yeah. And then the same dude, the, the, the he's just the same dude. The he's just like he's not even holding the the, the handle. He's just like this riding, <laughs> and the, a guy jumps onto his bike, and they hit him on the on the clavicle with with a pipe. And all he does, he grabs the dude's head, head butts him, and knocks him off. And the the the, the bike runs over the dude's arm. Like yes. you yep. see it all. See, see one thing I love about this movie: 
they 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 don't tell you they fucking show you they I'm show you more because i think they show I'm you very everything right now are you talking about this by the way guys <laughs> fully enough coincidentally i actually have this prepared oh yeah only eight seconds so i missed the fantastic bit where he gets his arm rolled over but anyway I believe wow. he has a bigger role in the manga. I may be wrong. I haven't read the manga. Have uh, any of you guys read the manga? I finished the first volume uh, yesterday. But nice. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, the clowns, they end up teaming up with with them uh, because, uh, what is it, uh, y- Yanagata actually really goes rogue when uh, Kanada starts kind of focusing more on K and where Tetsuo is. And so Yanagata mm-hmm. takes over and he teams up with the clowns and it actually shows in the, some of the final panels where uh, Tetsuo makes his head just explode. In oh. The manga. Oh, oh, see, that's it, the one thing. That's the one thing about this movie. So different. This so movie different. is, is quite long compared to most of them from this era, two hours that time. Yeah. Four but there's minutes. so much that's missing from it. So right, much. Brandon. It's hard yeah, to condense could, down they a whole do it, story. Thing. Yeah. The, ma- and what, the funny thing was the manga wasn't finished when this movie came out. Right? Like the manga, I don't think it was finished <laughs> for another couple of years. So I think so. Yeah. I, I, I'm curious if this, the ending of this movie is what he had in mind. And so you see the ending of the manga first here in the movie, or if he had something totally different, I'll, I'll have to read it. Just let me shout out two comments again, guys. And we, you know, we are nerd guys. I mean, why I'm over the details. Dempsey saying the mm-hmm. camera flares, the trails. That always blows my mind. I love that. How they did that back then, hand drawing. We've also got um, Gadfly Fiction. Look at the glint off of Canada's goggles just there. Things like that, man. Absolutely. You can get lost in the details, can't you? I've got one more. Let me play another one. An earlier clip. Do you remember the? There's a scene bef- during the first bike chase, and this is a background scene. But again, it's so much world building for me. Um, let's just say it happens in a restaurant with a clown flying through oh. the window. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. That's okay. That dude had a bad day. <laughs> yeah. you, if you look closely, he actually gets hit by the by the wheel. You know, mm-hmm. just takes back to the head. head almost. Oh my yeah. god! Now, there's one oh. thing. There's one thing with this movie. It has depending upon the sequence. There's three different frame rates that are used. Mm-hmm. Some of them are done at 12 frames per second. Uh, the, the panning of uh, of the cityscape or showing the signs that's done at 12. Okay. Most of the standard stuff is done at 24. Most of the bike stuff was done at 60. Cool. Oh. Wow. So with with wow. having to do sixty frames a second, that's one reason why it looks so good. But even when you even when you take that sixty and cut it down to the twenty four for the you know for a film release, yeah. it looks so much smoother compared to the other stuff. So yeah, they uh, they put a a ridiculous amount of money into this movie. And if I remember correctly, it's still the most expensive animated movie they've ever made. Really, I think wow. so. You know, it was, uh, it. What do you think? Uh, um, again, yeah, as you said, Brandon, you're perfectly right there. You can tell the level of detail on the bike, mm-hmm. the bike scenes. That's why I've, I've clipped so many of them. It's so amazing. It's almost like they were go- going for it for those scenes, and then maybe later on they were like, oh my God, you know, we're running out of money. We can't put the same level of detail into everything. Yeah, this movie, when it, uh, when it first came out back in 88, it cost them 1.1 billion yen to make it. Okay. That's huge. Oh. Yeah, when you throw in the inflation now, it's well. What is? Let's see. Right now, what is one yen? So yen isn't one yen like equivalent to a cent? One cent? Uh, right now it's equivalent to point (laughs) seven six cents. Really? So, yeah, taking that into consideration, let's see. Right now, so one one dollar is about one hundred and thirty, one hundred and thirty-five yen. Let's see. So one point one. Zero zero. So when Grace, so when Grace sends me one thousand yen in a super chat, it's actually less than ten dollars. Oh, I know, man. man. That sucks, doesn't it? I'm just, a, <laughs> I'm just a stingy, stingy mice. <laughs> Here's you, so, Mags. Right now, that this movie would have cost about eighty-four million U.S. dollars to make in the current exchange of U.S. to yen. Okay. So if it cost that much back then, ooh. Expensive, royally expensive movie to make, but of course it paid off in spades. 
Oh, so. yeah. I wonder how much ass I wonder how much ass he had to kiss in order to um get get all that money. <laughs> Who uh, knows? He was already pretty established if I'm not mistaken because I mean you you had uh things like uh he worked on collaborations like Memories and oh another one that I did just that proceed, watched uh, Did that proceed uh Akira? I the manga? Cuz I know the manga came out as early as 82 and the movie was 88. Okay. I know they I'm adapted Memories in the wrong. 90s. I don't know if that was not sure now. Mm. Mm, I'm not sure either. Wow! Look, I love this deep dive nerd knowledge here. Look, you know, look at me and say I'm I'm a fan of the movie, but I'm not, you know, a huge like what you call it geek expert on it. I just know what I like, and this is amazing. <laughs> but guys, let's bring it back to the actual the story. Yes. Now, this this is a bit of a crazy. It's a typical kind of Japanese crazy story where they love the telepathy, they love the kind of supernatural angle. But what do you think, Matt? Let me bring you into it. Does this go too much off the wall? Does it go too crazy towards the end? No, I actually think they do it, use it pretty sparingly as far as the the psychic powers and the the uh, visions that are given. Uh, it's, it's kind of more of a um, little bit of a spy espionage type uh, movie to where it's more about what's going on in the background in the city mm. more than it is about the the psychic powers I, yeah. I really feel because even though that hey this is the 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 a story they have a b story that kind of moves the movie along a lot more than the a story does great point yeah how about you Napoleon, what do you think? Does for you does it go a little bit too much off the wall? Does it start to lose its sense if it, if it had any in the beginning? I mean, what I'll, I'll say is every scene is important. Like it it goes from one situation to another situation. It escalates. It escalates. So what what's going on right now with this motorcycle uh, thing? They're small fry. Mm -hmm. They are small yeah. fry to the bigger yeah. picture. Because I like how it, like when the when the colonel first uh, uh, encounters them. I was like, what are they? Oh, they're just some random. They're just some random biker gang. Who, who gives a shit about them, you know? And that's when I think that was when they take they first take uh, Tetsuo away. So I'm curious what you guys think. Do you guys think that Tetsuo, when he gets hit by that explosion by a little Takashi right there, do you think he shielded himself? And that's why he he wasn't uh, as hurt as he could have been from an explosion. You know, he was just. Yeah, it would like have to be. He unconsciously defended himself, but he still fell off the bike, and so that's why he was hurt. That's mm -hmm. why. That's why I think was going on. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think that is part of it. From what I gathered out of seeing it this time, is that uh, one of the theories was Tetsuo, more or less, got an imprint upon him from. Uh, uh, let's see, which uh, Taka Takashi. Is what the twenty six? I always thought he always had it, and it was just because of his encounter with Takashi that it yeah awakened. It probably it, really, it probably really awakened it. Yeah. yeah. Well, later on, uh, as uh, let's see, was it to Masuru was explaining or doing in the exposition scene, is that everybody everybody within this universe has that that spark that Akira spark as they call it, but if it gets awakened that's when you have to basically put the clamp on it and help the person along figure out how to use it otherwise uh yeah but uh but yeah i do think uh well if all of them have it 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 sounds like uh, tetsuo was more predisposed to it but then smacking into uh, number uh, was it number 26 yeah. takashi yeah yeah that uh that opened it up but it also doesn't help that uh, the government just decided yeah we're gonna take this kid just because Got your barmy yeah. saying, yeah, I think um, he helped he helped protect him, and maybe that's how he got infected or or whatnot. Yeah, interesting. Mm, I yeah, will say this: there were. wasn't a lot of road rash shown because most of these guys would have had massive road rash <laughs> all over their bodies, and we don't see it. So, yeah. Hey, oh, this nothing, here, hey, guys. Uh, your barmy saying, love how the little kid in the car was watching. Yeah. We, we go back to the dog. The, the, the two attack dogs are coming down on them and they, they get shot. Yeah. And there's a little kid. You think he's going to be like crying or screaming. He's like, Oh, oh, he's really watching it. Isn't he like in amazement? And he or freaked Charlie, out. Or Charlie, the dog from all dogs go to heaven. 
that was it. But yeah, this is it. like like he gets like like he literally like they shoot they like they they mow his ass, they mow this dude's ass down like he's like yeah and then he just he's like you you see he's practically on death's door he raises the pistol they they do it even more and then it just Takashi freaking freaks out he starts screaming all of a sudden this is where we get our first real uh, destru- moment of destruction. <laughs> Broken glass, broken mm. like they, like shiz being knocked down from buildings, like uh, lights out. and neon stuff, and <laughs> and everybody's freaking the hell out, and they, everybody just clears out as a result. And so Takashi's there alone, and he's he's kind of and this is what leads into, you know, Tetsuo running into him on the highway. Gadfly fiction, you're not wrong, mate. Generally, when you get into accidents on bikes, you become a flesh crayon. It's mm-hmm. true, yeah, but again, it's a, you know, it's animation, it's kind of sci-fi, it's not meant to be too realistic, but I just love the level oh. of detail, again, to come back to that, when they show the accidents, they show the people rolling, as you were saying, Brandon, you know, you can see the amount of frames in, in these scenes, you can see the deep, like, the, the, the level of love and craft, this is, this movie has got a lot of love and a lot of craft into it, what do you think? Oh yeah, yeah it definitely does, and it has stood the, the test of time in comparison to many other things that have come out since uh, you can when you when you have that type of money to throw around and you can spend the time necessary to include the extra frames to smooth things out where needed it really does make a difference and i will say this uh the way that the that all of the characters are in this film they're very similar looking very similar facial structure yeah you only see this style yep. in this Almost. film there is nothing else close to it and only in Otomo's work. So yes, like, Memory has work. this, Steam yeah. Boy has this. Um, whatever Otomo has worked on, it will have this style of character. You don't uh, yeah, like a... you said, you don't see this anywhere else. That's why I like. I like unique I like it when art anime artists bring like a unique uh look to it. The Me guy too. that did Monster, Naoki Urasawa, I believe it is, it believe is his name. He brought yeah. a unique style to that. That that Naoki. that show and that manga has a unique style. Let um, me bring in uh, Matt. Sorry, what were you saying, mate, Matt? Oh, I was just gonna bring up that uh, they also did something very interesting during the talking scenes in this. Like typically with anime, during a talking scene, it'll just be kind of a still, and they'll just animate the mouth to save on animation. But in this, every character is very um kind of energetic when they're talking because they're always moving they're either moving their arms moving their heads or they're doing something walking talking and it just kind of brings a little more life to the characters in the movie absolutely some of the background scenes when you see for example when you see the biker gang like the good guys with just out walking with the friends and the the girlfriends are trying to like you know get with them and they're like you know what are you doing go away just this little detail it's so cool Right, where are we? So and I, I like how they're like, they're, this character. like I like how I like how Kanye's like piss off girl. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, get out of here, like shut <laughs> up, <laughs> you know, get out of here. You know, to- you know, to- you know, you know I, the old days of toxic, you know, masculinity. The toxic eighties definitely toxic. Have a full display. Oh. Brandon, how how I miss them, mate. That's all I'll say. How I miss them. Um, yeah. I, yeah, you know, within reason. Look, let's go into this one. Um, I never, when I first used to watch this, I never really got my head around who this was meant to be, who this character is. Can someone give a little bit of a background about him? Sure. He's one of three people that was part of this uh, group of uh, kids, gifted kids who had this ability to. I'm going to say channel this power, this this uh, this power that drives the universe, or in yeah. this case, drives uh, the wheel of time. Okay, j- just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> um, they were uh, just kidding, just kidding. Three or four. Yeah, they yeah. were uh, with yeah. Akira when they were in the uh, the the home when they were testing all the kids. They were uh, with him. And they even make, I think the girl makes a speech at some point in the movie where you had like adults, like they actually called uh, Takashi, not Takashi, hmm. uh, oh my God, Tetsuo, uh, an adult, even though he was only like 15, 16 years old. Right. Yeah, compared to them, but, yeah, he is an adult. Yeah. yeah. But they, they said that you are you were too old to really get this power. Like you got to make the decision on what to do with the power at a young age. Like a Jedi. He's too yeah. old to begin the training. I've learned so much. <laughs> hmm. 
Well, Tetsuo sure didn't. Uh, he didn't take the path of the of the light. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Uh, no, he one. didn't. I mean, all it, that it, all that insecurity, <laughs> all that jealousy, and all like very very weak, just very weak uh, individual. And now you give him all this power. I mean, I'm gonna say um, this. Stanley was absolutely correct when he wrote, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, and he was none of those mm -hmm. things. Yep. Yeah, uh, the uh, the drugs actually play a bigger part in the manga as well. Um, the capsules that are the normal drugs that you can get on the street. Um, I think uh, Canada got one of the drugs that they got from the the faci the facility uh, by accident. He had one of the nurses at their school test it, and apparently this thing was like a hundred times more potent than something that you could get on the street wow and uh the no general way. even says to uh tetsuo hmm. when he gets a hold of this drug like he finally gets a hold of this pill like he tells tetsuo do not take that drug because it will kill you and tetsuo being the kid that he is he just pops it in and now the general's like well now you need to come with us because that's not going that's going to wear off and the withdrawal is going to be absolutely agonizing Okay, that great, explains great a lot more with what we see later in. So, yeah, there's there's a like little things like that that got left out from the manga to the anime is it, it doesn't add a whole lot, but it does give you a little more context. It's good to hear. I've got another clip here. I've actually kept the the sound not soundtrack but the actual sound of the actors on this because there's no music playing but we were talking about the detail the trails of the bikes guys i know you're gonna love this but yep so oh that's all oh it's just like, not even like words but so cool Okay, let's have a look. So I say, uh, let me talk about the music because I, I can't really play it because it's YouTube, get killed, get nuked from orbit. But what do you guys think about the music on this? Because it's got a very distinctive sound, hasn't it? It's very, ja it sounds very Japanese. It sounds very, like, sounds like it just belongs. Like, you, you know, you're mm -hmm. in, you're in Neo Tokyo. You are, you are, you are there. You know, you're, you're experiencing the culture. You're experiencing the sounds of this. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing, it's an amazing soundtrack. And it just made me think of, I don't know who did the music, but it reminded me a little bit of uh, what Kenji Kawai did with uh, Ghost in the Shell. Just going to check briefly about the music. Brandon, how about you? Do you like this soundtrack on Akira? Oh, yeah. The soundtrack is legendary. They're, once again, just like uh, you know, just like the animation style, the facial feature structure of the characters, mm. there is nothing else like it. You know, it's it's a lot like how uh, <clears throat> how Blade Runner and and the soundtrack for it. You can't use that soundtrack in any other movie. It does not work. It's the same with this. It does not work in any other show. Yeah, it's not you, futuristic, is it? It's like, like I was saying before. It's you know Japanese drums, the taiko, the taiko beat going mm -hmm. on. It's it's really really good. I've just seen here, guys, on the on the wiki page about the dialogue. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Um, it had pre-scored dialogue. That means the dialogue's recorded before the film starts production, and the movements of the characters' lips are animated to match it. A first for an anime production, and extremely unusual even today for anime. Dialogue Very first. Nice. And then animated. That's fascinating. Okay, where are we? <laughs> Hello, Flaccid. I see you there. How dare you call this <laughs> film <laughs> underrated? <laughs> oh, Mr. He's saying smash the like button if you haven't. Yeah, thanks, Flaccid. Appreciate it. Uh, overrated. Well, yeah. you know. There are oh, some I people that do like believe that. <laughs> Brave and, art, mate. That's all I'm saying. Brave art, Flaccid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm trying to find a clip to drop for that. I've only got this one, I think, for Flaccid. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, my it's got Brandon laughing. Made Brandon laugh. Oh, I love that movie. God, I love Caddyshack. That's another old one for an old, old person like me, Matt. Have you seen, have you seen Caddyshack with Bill Murray oh. back in the day? I believe I have. It's been a very long time. I might be more familiar with Caddyshack 2, though. I okay. want a hamburger. I want a cheeseburger. You'll take nothing and like it. 
That <laughs> <laughs> was uh, yeah. another one of those. Uh, what? Oh, what were they called? National Lampoon movies or something like that? It's in that style, yeah, that vein. That yeah, yeah. Your hero Ramus, you know, directing. And, it was yeah. an early one, wasn't it for them? Yeah, yeah. An early one. One, it's once again, another one of those films that uh, absolutely could not even be dreamt of today, lest you be called your your, your various uh, istophobia Yahtzee. So, yeah. Very toxic. Very, very toxic. toxic. What do you mean, very toxic? Let's play some music. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Rodney Dangerfield is awesome Rodney. in it. But, uh, yes, he is. But yes. Uh, Wasn't it a Britney Spears well, song? Well, we're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I think about when I think about toxic Britney Spears. And that video? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> that, 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 that word's kind of lost its meaning, hasn't it? It's got ridiculous. It really to has. Me, to, you know, yeah. toxic means like toxic chemicals and like superhero origin stories. That's what I think. Well, what was the? Uh, of, uh, it was the. Uh, oh crap! Uh, I can see it. The the superhero movie from 2004 that Pixar did, The Incredibles. When everyone is special, no one is special. When everyone's an istophobiazzi, no one's an istophobiazzi. You're exactly right. Words have meaning, and if you overuse something, then it does lose its meaning. And a lot of things have been played out. That's a great quote. Very, so very you, good. So what did you think of the uh, of the moment with um, where Tetsuo steals the bike with uh, with uh, with uh, was a Kauri? Yeah, Kauri, his girlfriend. His, uh, yeah, his un, his severely underaged girlfriend. I yeah. I never put that together until. Until the, it was some someone in one of the chats that I'm in mentioned that I'm like, oh boy, now I feel kind of dirty. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Kaori. Kaori. See, I'm getting pretty good with my oh, with my uh, pronunciations. Oh Kaori. My God, Brandon, you, what? Are, oh my God, underage. Never even thought about it. You've just ruined the whole movie for me. No, I I'm know joking, it, it, it's junior yeah. high school. Did you say probably 13, 14, 15, or and then yeah, high school, she's 16, she's junior 17, high. 18. Yeah. I, I loved yeah. how before this they showed uh, them in school and they're just being like yelled at by the teacher. They're 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 like the true they had truancy officers all over the place, <laughs> and like they say, "Hey, old man, what's going on?" And he's like, "I'm 25. How dare you call me old yeah. man?" I'm like, "I'm like, dude, I, I'm, I'm not I'm even married this. yet. I'm watching this as an adult. And I'm like, how do you let a teenager get under your skin?" Grow a fucking pair. Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Oh, like, I thought you know, that was a uh, <laughs> makeshift police station that that they had turned like a stadium into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, it was. Send, but, and then they run to school, and yeah. then they're all being smacked. They're all they're all like in front of the principal. <laughs> smacked by the, smacked by, the plan. by the PE teacher. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is uh, like this is so 80s. That this is just so 80s, right? There. Corporal right punishment. There. Um, guys, let me address this. Um, Flassy Phoenix is dropping $2 in the chat. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Gray over Akira. How much dollars for a drunk gray? It's um, it's 1.54 p.m. here. I'm being very good. I've not had a, even a small a small drink to, you know, still the nerves before I went live. I'm drinking tea, I swear. So sorry about that. But for you, Flaccid, I've got to drop um, a drinking clip for that, haven't I? You know it's gonna, what it's going to be, guys. It's one of my favorites. Here we go. You're drunk. Just bring out the tape. Cake and fine wine. If you don't leave, we'll call the police. Balls. We want the finest wines available to humanity. We want them here and we want them now. Miss Blenner has it. Telephone the police. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Never been hit for these, Brandon. These are long, like long clips. The with Neil and I. It's an old classic from the eighties, a British movie. You know, Paul McGann, the Doctor Who. Good old Paul McGann's in there. Richard E. Grant, fantastic. Love playing those clips. But I think my, my viewers are like, oh, not another the great. How many times are you going to play this clip? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've I've got a clip that's severely out of context. That's quite hilarious, and it doesn't cause a problem because the uh, the show that it's from is so terrible that it only got like three or four episodes before it got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no way! What what is it? What's the show? You know, I don't remember what it is. I know that uh, I know that it's available on Crunchyroll in the dub Ooh. form. And watching, you got to watch it in the original because the the Japanese language and the voice actress, just the the pitch and cadence of her voice is so. It fits it. It fits it much better than the than the English dub. I'll find it and we'll, we'll play no worries, it when you're no ready. Oh, Will it give us this reaction, Brandon? This, <laughs> I mean, guys, you you know what scene this is from? Yeah, I didn't want to clip the actual scene because it is pretty grotesque. But let's talk a yeah. little bit about some of the the gore and the violence in this, the horror themes in this movie. So, Nerporio, did you like this scene of 
Oh, I mean, like first, losing first, his like, guts. You see, like you see his, you see his mouth ajar, and he's drooling. He, he's in a lot of pain. And <laughs> first, he, he first sees he sees himself falling into the ground, falls yeah. falls into a pit. So, cool. and then a few seconds later, he's kneeling down like he is now, and his innards, just his stomach, just falls out and he's he see we see this very briefly and then he's trying to like he thinks he, he sees it himself he's trying to put it back into his body it's so fucked up and yeah, then it's and then they come messed up yeah and then they and then they uh then the um and then the the, the, the feds come the feds come in in, in the in the the garbage uh, in the gar- in the garbage trucks and then you get this big dude and he just throws kind of just grabs his face and throws him aside it's yep, a great scene. He does. You don't mess with that dude. He's a proper men in black, isn't he? He's a huge guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the and colonel, then, you see the colonel there briefly, and, he, and then the kind of is like, I, re- I remember you. What's like Canada yeah. says, like, you know, he's like, who the fuck are you? To the to the huge guy, the guy just like stares at him, doesn't do anything. It's, it's, it's a great scene. He's just, yeah. they, they're just a biker gang. They're they're, they're small fry in, in the in the grand, grander scheme of uh, what's going on, what's truly going on. I love it. I love it. Yeah, okay, there's there's a, a ton of a levels to this. So. Here. A branding clip. So yep. I'm going to drop this in. It's okay, isn't it? Everything's good. We've been going for this now, one's, so we should be fine. This one's what is what I affectionately call the out-of-context bludgeoning. <laughs> okay. Oh. Are you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? You close your eyes if you want to. I'm just warning you. Now, forget trigger warnings. There's no such thing as triggers. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> this is a self and lead? No. I think the show is actually called Bludgeon Angel, now that I think about it. <laughs> I, think you're right. I swear Bro, that's how how a kid died in Elf and Lead with his like half of his head was cut off by <laughs> uh, you, you want some hilarious clips you've got to get stuff from like uh ghost files mm. okay. or ghost stories my bad my bad ghost stories yeah. you're not telling you you it, hockey show are you ghost files? No, no i'm talking about ghost stories an anime is so bad that they did not <laughs> care what they said in the dub they were like do whatever you want to do and Bye. they did and oh my god <laughs> by the way, by the way, by the way, man, I got I, I couldn't get it on uh, on right stuff, so I I bought the Yu Yu Hakusho on Amazon. They actually, even though I didn't ask for it, they gave me the refund. You know, they they refunded and they they they, they matched the price of uh, right stuff. So I got I got a oh, refund nice. for, for some of that stuff. Nice. The only problem nice. is I ran out of space in my anime section, was my top, which is my top shelf right there. So I had to put it all the way in the bottom. So. Yeah, that that's blasphemy to you, Haku Show. It is. It is. I have to. I have to. I have to write this wrong. I have to write. Good night, this Jacob. Wrong. By the way, thanks for watching, man. Jacob, you take. See you, Jacob. Yeah, he, he was part of the. He was watching it with me and uh, and Gadfly Fiction. Yeah, we were having a blast. And you know, Greg, Greg joined us. We were having a freaking blast. I wanted to keep it. watching, but I was like, I need, I need to make some more clips. I need to get some screen caps I, I as think well. It's I great, it's great too important for for me for for you know. <laughs> great too no. important. You know, now yeah, so i gotta make some I, more i gotta make some more clips myself i especially for for 80s month uh, this month i need to make some more because the, the ultra violence only goes so far from the fist of the north star and then of course next month it's going to be just off the wall with all of it so yeah did you uh it's fun stuff if you covered uh md geist i think that's another 80s anime that's super duper violent it Seems is i haven't hilarious. that's probably coming up tomorrow yeah, that, 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 up. That, that md geist right there great <laughs> Oh, such pain! I kept, I kept a bit of the soundtrack in the background there, just a little bit. To, to the, but yeah, man, so many good moments. You know, you could spend all day just taking screen caps, couldn't you? And like trying to make clips from this movie. You'd, you'd be there like for a, for a whole day in Emporial. You know, I should have made more, but hey, what can you do? What did you guys think of the battle in the uh, <clears throat> in the sewers when they're 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 commandeering those oh, flying yeah. those flying uh, vehicles, kind of like a, kind of like something out of Star Wars? 
you know, y'all y'all were talking about like uh, the the gory moments of the anime. The uh, in all honesty, the goriest moment for me is where uh, Kay shoots a police officer. Like she doesn't get him headshot. She they choose to go for the side of the face and shoot his face off. Yeah, and he and falls into just, this, and he falls into, into the, the sewer, sewer water, and so does Connie. Connie, Connie uh, gets uh, gets uh, his head raises from the sewer water, and he sees the dead rat with the maggots. He's yeah. like, oh, <laughs> shit. yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's and, rough. Yeah, when they get the flying bikes too, like uh, one of yeah. the one of the protester guys or one of the whatever you call him, terrorists, uh, like. Yeah, kind of goes to like grab the gun and his like his entire arm still attached to the gun and the guy's nowhere to be found. Yeah, yeah, it's a great scene, the sewer scene. I remember like, we were watching that bit, weren't we, New Pearl? And he like, jumped, getting he shot jumped off the, the face ledge. Here. He jumped off the ledge onto oh. the onto the uh, moving <laughs> bike. Like, like I mean, you this I mean this would sound you know commonplace in eighties action, but like imagine yeah. yourself doing something like that. It's ridiculous. Kinda is like a freaking parkour genius man i mean gray i don't know if you have the be- one of the beginning scenes where it kind of did like or no it's uh after tetsuo steals the bike and kind of did like jumps off the back of a bike is running runs up another bike and kicks a dude in the face amazing yes, he does amazing I it's the it clown yeah. so good yeah he does that like all throughout the movie. Like, kind of just does not care. He is he doesn't fearless. care. He doesn't give a fuck. Shout out Nene Nezo. Nene Ne, good friend from Europe. Going to bed, mate. You take care. Have a good night. You up late, Have a good night. You? Have a good Appreciate night. Appreciate it. Okay. I think I've played all my clips now. So it's time to start playing them all over again, isn't it? <laughs> For the beginning, because you can't get enough <laughs> of these micro scenes. But the first one I made was this one. <laughs> so good blown away every time Whew. okay before we start going into a crazy you know this is amazing <laughs> that's what we're saying so we talked about where you first watched it have you ever seen it on a big screen like for example in um you know in an art house cinema there we go not matt yet. not yet uh, no nope. yeah i think when they uh brought the 4k out i went and watched it in a uh imax theater uh, with my wife and a friend like I actually drug one of my friends that like a younger kid who's like tw- and it's so weird to say kid at 20 but uh, <laughs> I, I drug him yep. to see it because he's never seen it before and they had it in the subs so we went and watched it in a 4k theater subbed oh, and wow. that dude walked out of there and he had like a new appreciation for anime after the- watching it he was like holy crap I've never seen this before and now I love it <laughs> Mm-hmm. But yeah, a big IMAX screen in 4K, like, oh my God, it was great. It was absolutely great. Lucky you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I've never seen it on IMAX. I've seen it on two different cinema screens, just like art house cinemas, one in Manchester and one in uh, Berlin when I was visiting my brother. But yeah, just so good. I'll have to wow. keep my eye out for that. That That's actually, this would be a great theater. This would be a great theatrical experience right here. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah we, it would be a fathom <laughs> event. <laughs> yeah, is and this, with theaters this... in the state that they're in, I mean, I could see them bringing it back around, or I would hope they would, because the uh, at least AMC, as much as I know about them, they have been really trying to get people back to theaters, and they are constantly bringing animated movies uh, to the theaters now. I'll be honest, it was a blast seeing uh, Star Trek, the motion picture, and the Wrath of Khan in the theaters. So, yeah, that would have been fun. I, just, seeing, just seeing older movies <clears throat> in the theaters, I mean, I want, I, I want to do that more often. Just see, just see the classics that, you know, that came out before I was born. Yeah. And uh, this, would, this, this is definitely another one I do want to check out. But, like, th- <laughs> how far are we at now? Like, <laughs> like... Uh, did we get to Tetsuo uh, uh, on his uh, rampage? Uh, yeah, he's, his, no, his powers no, not rampage. quite that yeah. far. Not yeah, doing we'll... scene by scene. Sorry, I'd love to do that and maybe do that one day. But just like picking bits and pieces. But how violent are the police in this? The Japanese police. Unbelievable. Oh. You know, when the this scene here where you see citizens being taken out in the background by these bodies. There's, <laughs> there's a there's a great scene, and it almost it's almost like art mimics life, uh, where. Uh, there's a cop that has some of the the uh, smoke bomb smoke grenades that he's shooting from one, and he just 
he comes out of the smoke and turns to one of the protesters and just shoots him with the the smoke grenade. And there's <laughs> actually a li- yeah, and I think some of the uh, the Chinese riots that actually happens. Oh my god! Really? Wouldn't yeah. surprise me. Wouldn't China. surprise me. How about in the states, Brandon? Would would that go down in the states or not? Well, I don't recall some anything quite that extreme over the past two years, but it wouldn't surprise me in certain <laughs> uh, a certain a certain large uh, uh, cities. Fortunately, I don't live anywhere near those uh, those hellscapes, so I'm, I'm good. I'm good. That's good. That's good. Good to hear. Yeah. I'm in a place where if they tried to start something like that, it wouldn't it wouldn't end well for them. So, but yes, then we get number number twenty five and her precognition revelation. She's called Kyoko. We yeah. had seen again, um, as you said, Nepori was talking about the the style. I think we all talked about it, the unique style of um, the animation and the, the manga, of course, it's based on. Um, I, when I was younger watching it, because um, a lot of it went over my head, I couldn't quite get used to the old looking kids. I thought they were children, you know, but just they'd been aged by their powers, maybe. Is that the idea they think they were going for? Uh, I think I it's know. a combination of the powers and the drugs. Okay. That they've been giving them. Yeah. Maybe from the tests it, too, because they put them through quite a hellacious amount of tests. From what it sounded like, I think uh, Tetsuo made mention of the drugs making them that way, or or he didn't want to get any more of the drugs because he didn't want to end up looking like them. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if it's a, it's a combination of the powers and the power suppressor drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think I think this is definitely one of those uh, little bits of, that are missing from the manga to the anime that you know doesn't do a whole lot for the anime, but it does add a little bit of context. Cool, it's good to know. Yeah, interesting comment. Then just want to go back to Dempsey. Dempsey in the chat is asking about: Doesn't the rebellion mean more in Eastern culture than it does in Western culture? I mean, the rebellion of the bikers and the actual rebels, both. I don't know, mate. I can't really comment on that. I know in Japan there was a big kind of student rebellion in the 70s. I remember that, just from the news. And I think that uh, with this, the part of the rebellions that was going on or what they were showing was because of the tax burdens or, or just general bad economic times because of coming coming out of Reconstruction from, you know, from having the uh, what was supposedly an atomic bomb attack, but turning out to be you know mm. the Akira transformation. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I think they made a little mention of it that after the Akira attack, they went into World War Three, and so they were probably coming mm. out of war times. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's a different type of setting for for them. Definitely not the definitely not the normal in what you see in in current anime as far as. If you've got something that's contemporary going on, they're not talking about uh, riots or or anything like that. That's for sure. Was it the very beginning? Just to go back to that, it says when it opens up, it's 31 years after World War Three. You know, which is 1988, AD 2019, Neo Tokyo. So yeah, you're right. 31 years later, and I think this is reclaimed land in Tokyo Bay, as far as I can tell from the map. You know, they like they built a kind of new reclaimed land area in the center of the water. Yeah, you know, they had to do something because probably parts of old uh, parts of the old city were not uh, were probably not inhabitable for a very long time. No, for sure. No, I, I don't. Did, did y'all catch catch it, or may, maybe I'm just uh, kind of missing something? But. Did Tetsuo get abandoned by his parents or was his parents killed? Because it seemed like there was a high number of kids being abandoned mm. when they were Orphans, doing some of the, yeah. uh, the, 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 uh, oh my God, the flashbacks and stuff. Because even, mm. uh, Kanada said that he was new there too, which I don't know if it was just that parents were giving their kids up to orphanages or that they kids were still kind of being found from, I, I don't know, like the the war and everything like that. I don't know. Maybe the manga covers that. I'm curious. Mm. I'm. It almost. I think he was. I think he was abandoned or he was given up, based on what I've you know just thinking back about it real quick. But I don't think it's fully clear on on all of that. So yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully explain. the manga does explain more. 
it could yeah. explain why Tetsuo <clears throat> is the way he is. Yeah. Like I, I know they showed a scene with uh, Tetsuo like an adult handing them to another adult, yeah, but I it's wasn't a really sure short scene, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't sure if that was just maybe a, a director or something, or maybe that was oh. his parent handing them over. Mm. It's not made clear, is it? You just see a very brief flashback where you see Tetsuo, when, Tetsuo sorry, when he's very, very young. Yeah. Even then, he's got the kind of the big forehead, hasn't he? The domed forehead thing, and mm-hmm. he's passed on to um, a single. It's like a, a what is it? A mother. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah, maybe adopted, maybe so. Yeah. The reclaimed land was the only place people could live. The surrounding countryside was contaminated, says Charlie. Charlie the Unicorn. Great to see you, by the way. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. There we go. That. That's it. Perfect. So, Matt, you've read the, the first volume of the manga. You talked about there's a lot more kind of detail in that. Does it Does it go into detail about what caused the war? Is it just like basically Akira being um. activated? No, nah, like they they don't really um uh, like I said I've only done the first volume so far so I'm ho- I'm going to try to get the other I think there was 6 in total so the next 5 I really want to get and read more into it. But it kind of it kind of starts out exactly like it starts out in the anime where it just kind of opens up and it talks about uh what happens then and then it goes right into uh Kanada and Tetsuo and the uh, and uh, kind of all that that stuff that's going on at the time. Thanks, guys. I've got a little bit of background noise, so uh, can someone take the take the, the thing for a sec? Brandon, how about you? Uh, I haven't read the manga. I need to. And actually, I've got a screen share for how much the uh, the full box set is currently going for on Scamazon. And actually, okay. if uh, yeah, Scamazon, I. I'm now that I have a local manga store, the first one opened in my town just this past Saturday. I have given this shop tons of recommendations, and there are stuff that they've never heard of. This is on the list for them to get for me the 35th anniversary box set hardcover. As you can see, it's currently going for, uh, from uh, Scamazon at 170 bucks. And uh, the softback or the regular paperbacks, they're going for. About 20, 21, 22 bucks. Yeah. So this is yeah, not, right. yeah, this is not a cheap series to uh, obtain brand new. There's, uh, but, there's, uh, I believe there's six volumes of the manga. I have the yep. first volume right up there. I still haven't read it. So that's, uh, that's totally, I mean, yeah, the red one right there, that's the one I got. But yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been wanting to get that 35th anniversary for a very long time. Yeah. That'd be the one to get. But uh, even considering my my shop when it just opened, they had a whole ton of great stuff. They had the first 12 volumes hardback of Berserk. They had Dragon Ball. They had a Spy Family. They had Goblin Slayer. They had all the volumes of My Hero. The one thing I noticed after going to the shop and checking it out and purchasing my first two manga... They were out of almost every single volume one of all the series that they were carrying. Almost every single one of them. Hmm. That is crazy, but hmm. good. And I'm, yep. I'm actually surprised that they would sell out of all the number ones. But I guess uh, a lot of people are wanting the number ones in your area. Well, as I said this is this is the first uh, dedicated manga Japanese toy, and eventually anime store in my town the next closest one would be uh 50 miles north and but uh yeah it's it's nice to it's nice to have something like that and have such a wide variety and have it be so so awesome and it was it was it's nice to be able to go in and and pick stuff up without having to you know drive a long ways to do it or order from scamazon yeah, I, I more or less have to do Amazon or rely on thrift stores because the one comic shop I have hates anime and manga and everything to do with it. Oh, yeah, that, that's, well, that's 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 too bad because it, it's, I'm gonna be it's honest. Very weird. Anime and manga is superior to most comics. I I don't know if you could call these guys purist or what, but he carries a few things like he definitely holds the, or gets the Gundam models. But outside of that, the guy really like they've been open for about 10 years now. And 
I rarely see any anime or manga in there unless somebody like they'll take it if somebody trades it into them, but they're not going to order the stuff. And that's sad. That's really sad because they could, they could open up their everything and, and maintain their business a lot easier than the other way around. And as I said, with the shop being so new, it hasn't even had its official opening opening yet, but they've already, as I said, they've already gone through quite a, quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of goods already. Plus now I have a source to be able to get stuff to be able to do giveaways. Yay. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Uh, guys, thanks. Yeah. For that. I really appreciate right. it. Just laughing. No, it, it wasn't a coffee. She was making a cup ramen. There we go. I bet you all wish you could have one right now. It's so good yeah. over here. Yeah. It's junk who, who food, does, but it's great. Who doesn't it probably love taste better ramen. over there. <laughs> well, you can get from... some pretty you can get some pretty decent ramen where i live we've got uh, yeah i've got a few a few uh a few japanese restaurants and japanese sub stores within stores here it's it's funny we've got Ooh. a fairly high a fairly high concentration of uh, japanese and chinese people here and and thai anymore so okay. yeah we've, we've been we've been inundated with uh, the far east and it's most delicious and i love it <laughs> so guys uh, we got about... we touched Oh, go for it. Go for it, Matthew. Go for it. Oh, I just random chatter. I was just going to say, I got like three Japanese restaurants, but probably about a hundred different uh, Mexican restaurants around me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, mate, yeah. I'm jealous about that. Uh, lots of tacos. Well, where I live is more rural and, and all that. So, yeah, we we have a we have a pretty a pretty large contingent of, uh, of South American folk that uh, either both permanent here or temporary here and Okay. Yeah, we got a ton of Mexican food, but I can say it's really good. I'm so not lacking for good stuff. Matt, no problem. Let me bring you back to the movie. We talked a little bit about the weird scene here. We've got Dempsey asking, um, what was going on with that milky death teddy bear nightmare golem? <laughs> Great summary, mate. Why was it filled with milk? Good question. What do you think? I mean, like, I, I think your, your barmies pretty much uh, ran the money. Mother's milk. Mother's milk. But, I mean... That and maybe maybe really Scott had something to do with this. You know how you know how he's a fetish for, you know, I, care his characters bleeding milk, milk. From androids and robots. Yeah, <laughs> and, like, I actually like, wonder like, if this was out the milk, milk, like sweating the milk and barfing the milk. I mean, <laughs> I I do wonder if it's milk or if it's water. No, it's milk. It's definitely milk. They say so in the movie. Is it like oh, because they're kind of old children again? They're still children, even though they look old. Is that going back to that? Because the, the 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 psychic children make this scene happen. They're trying to freak out uh, yeah. Tetsuo, aren't they? Trying to scare him, and he's too strong in the end. He's too powerful. He just breaks the scene down. But it's a creepy scene. It, the, yeah, the it was only reason why confusing. that scene ends the way it does is because of the the glass. Now he steps on the glass. When I first saw, it, I was like, oh. Ooh, you know, he steps Ouch. on the glass, breaks it. He's got the glass shards in his foot. Yes. And they freak out. The kids freak out. And they and, and they, just, they, they retreat. He just pulls As, that glass right out of his foot, too. Like, yeah. Just, Maybe that centered him. Maybe that kind of brought him round, you know, like, whoa, you know, bang. There's a bit of reality. So it broke the illusion or it gave him back his uh, his power because he was shot. Yeah. And, 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 like, they didn't like the sight of blood, too. The, 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 yeah. Takashi and the the other two, Kyoko and I forget the, the the third the third guy's name, third kid's name, but Masaru. Yeah. Masaru. And then he just, and then right after that he goes on his rampage. And it's it gets freaking insane after this. <laughs> well, he, like he, like he, gets, he implodes uh... he implodes a bunch of dudes in the in the corridor. At least that's well, why it's hospitalized twice, right? Because yeah. is this the first time or the second time I'm This is the little... second time. Okay, so this is the second time. So yeah, this is where he goes on the the rampage. Yeah, the, the scientist yeah. like, hey, you gotta go back in your room and then, and then you see like arm <laughs> famous seed hanging on the seat right there. It's freaking ridiculous. Yeah, I was like, Shh. I mean, I was watching it in in Discord. I was <laughs> typing. I was, I was, I was like, holy shit, holy shit. I kept typing holy shit throughout the movie. It's well, that scene, guys, it makes you stop wherever you're doing and you're just pulled in. You're just like kind of in shock watching it. It's a, it is an incredible scene. It's a famous scene. I wanted to clip it, but I just I just didn't have time. But yeah, Brandon, how about you? We're talking about scenes here and it's difficult to choose, isn't it? Favorite scenes. But how about some of the iconic scenes in this movie? What would you say? What stands out for you? Well, this uh, this is definitely one of them. 
the yeah. final battle at the uh, Olympic Stadium is the other one. This oh, one is definitely nightmare fuel, and it made zero sense to me for a very long time. Me too. <laughs> but watching it again more recently, and of course watching it now, it makes a lot more sense of what they were trying to do. They're trying to contain Tetsuo. And the only way right. that they could do that was in their psychic world or this this psychic prison that they're building to try and try and keep him there. And of course, you know, stepping on the glass, it broke that. So, yeah. Great point. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, uh, Matt, running 66, if you can choose some of the your favorite scenes from this movie? Man, it's... I mean, it is very hard to choose, but definitely the beginning or in the middle when uh, Canada jumps off the bike and then kicks oh, the guy yeah. in the face, and then when Tetsuo go like he follows the the space laser back into space and like i love that it goes from like a very kind of sensory scene for your ears to everything's just dead silent they don't do any sound for the destruction of the solomon laser or anything and it just you just get to watch it be destroyed and i love like little things like that because i mean space is a vacuum and you're not going to hear anything yeah, it was a very good scene. There we go. I couldn't find it. It's amazing. You know, I'd even half forgotten about this this crazy ending where he goes all Superman almost, doesn't he? But yeah, the, yeah. as you said, the silence, and then you just get this visual image of Tetsuo like flying straight up, lands on this satellite, this kind of Star Wars death weapon, which had no effect on him, and he just takes it out. No, it took out his arm. It took out his entire arm. He's like, oh. <gasps> Oh Jesus! Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. After he got hit by uh, by uh, by uh, by Canada or Canada with the laser first, it damaged his <laughs> arm, and then yeah, Canada, and then the uh, the soul laser uh, uh, finishes off. Of course, while he's up there doing damage to it, the it moves off track, so the laser starts uh, firing everywhere <laughs> and causing massive amounts of damage. Uh, yes, gotta love it. Yeah, that you whole, know, I, that whole oh, go space ahead. sequence just makes you think of 2001 a space odyssey just like the silence you know mm. just like you said the, it, they're in space it's a vacuum and you want and, and i mean it's it, it went it went into hard science fiction territory and you know i can always appreciate that because i don't know something about silence is just something that's very and i don't know impactful to me i don't know what it is but it's it makes you it makes me want to pay attention more i don't know what it is something about silence you know less is more Type of oh, deal. Definitely. I don't know what it is. Less is more. Matt, what were you saying then? Oh, I was just going to also mention like uh, the second time that this laser was about to f- fire, mm. uh, Tetsuo actually saves Kanada from being blasted by this laser. So I almost wonder if he did that intentionally because he no, didn't want his he did friend not. to die. He did not. He did not. He did not. What's funny reckon, was really? after the, this was right. This was right oh. before. This was like right before. So he goes mm. flying up, and then uh, kind of is like, "Oh shit!" And then he's running, and these things, these things are 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 are, 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 are going to smash him if he doesn't get out of the way. So he's running away from all these things falling that that are falling towards him from from above. Can you imagine shit just you know just about to well, you know free falling about to crush you completely? It's like, it looked yeah. like something out of a cartoon, but like. The movie establishes that he could fucking die. I'm watching this. Yeah. I'm like, holy fucking shit. Well, the, the reason I say that is because when Tetsuo makes the barrier for to mm. keep from being blasted by that, so he makes it so wide because uh, Kanada is on top of a kind of a hill about to throw a rock and smash Tetsuo's yeah. head. Or yeah, Tetsuo's he's doing head the Kirk. He's going to do the Kirk Gorn thing where, you know, he's going to take I knew you were going to say that. Oh. For real. I when I saw that. But then Tetsuo makes this huge barrier, so and awesome. I, I just don't see a reason for him to make that huge barrier like just big enough for him and Canada when he could have just easily made one small enough for him to keep from being blasted by the laser. So it 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 makes me wonder a little bit. No, it's good. It's good. I love these kind of debates and discussions. That's what it's all about. That's what these panels are for. We've got one from Dempsey talking about um, he loves the scene where he crashes the, his bike on purpose for his fallen friend earlier on. Again, yeah, man. Yeah. You could pick any of those bike scenes, couldn't you? Whew. I mean, the bike is part of the individual. You know, if the individual goes, the bike's got to go too. You know? Yeah. 
he's he's sending uh, the bike to his friend. At least that's at least that's how I saw it. And I mean, it's kind of funny when you think about it, but the bike kind of keeps Tetsuo grounded in reality for the majority of the movie because he's always chasing that bike. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, he definitely. I was always like sad when I used to watch it when I was first getting into it, you know, like what happens to Ted Sua? Like I really felt bad for him, but then, you know, in the end, you're almost like hating him, aren't you? Because he just becomes a murderous madman almost, like Superman gone wrong. But he, he kind of comes back at the very end. He's just like, help me. Because throughout the movie, he's like, I don't want your help. You keep helping me. And mm. I, I just, I don't, he, like throughout the movie, he's just, he just, he doesn't want Connie's help. But, He's at the point now where he is completely like he is like when he turns into spoiler alert, he turns into a big, massive baby. Like he turns into <laughs> a big, massive, of course, he does. baby. That, so Japanese. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe it because it's indescribable. It's just yeah. a monstrosity of like, <laughs> wasn't there toes a, and a... fingers and oh, God. It's organs insane. and what? limbs just and tentacles just popping out grabbing people and forcing them to assimilate along with with his body and poor oh poor cowrie <laughs> poor cowrie poor cowrie uh, giant crushed. space baby crushed. and uh one of those uh one, one of the uh sci-fi movies i can't remember which one it was 2001 that was yeah. the one i just one <laughs> i've never watched it <laughs> okay well, that needs to be movie. rectified because that is down. an excellent movie. All you gotta, do, all you gotta know is dun 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 dun. Ba da 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 ba da ba da. Yeah, exactly. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Matt. I cannot do that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Dave. I cannot I do, do that. that. <laughs> I think you know the question too. What do you think you're doing, Matt? Please stop, Matt. Please stop. Matt. So yeah, that that's and then and then you get then you get lights then you get lights coming towards the screen you know like Homer Simpson sitting on on the a vibrating chair and he sees all the lights coming towards him that's basically the end of the movie. I'm that's, sorry, that, Brian, and that's the thousand one. Do that. And then, he, then he becomes a space baby. And that's it. <laughs> two thousand one is not awful, Nathan. Nathan is not true. Two thousand one is is a visceral experience to to behold. It's like a horror. It's it's a it's an unsettling movie Ooh, at points. Like you hear, yeah. that's unsettling. You, that is very yeah. unsettling. Blood like just impossible. just like just like a piece of that can just spring out and grab you and force you to become part of it. It's like it's a night. It's that like this is the stuff of nightmares. Can you imagine going this slow, point. slowly by this thing? What, what's oh, this cap, kind of horror called where it's like fr- uh, flesh and mechanical body, horror. body? Okay, body horror. Yes, Lovecraftian nightmares. Yeah. You would think you would think uh, David Cronenberg made or, or or consulted on this right here. I mean, look at that! Look at that! Look at look at those little. You know, little tentacles, those little phallic things, just grabbing you and forcing you to become part of it, just only for it to crush you slowly. And right yeah. here, this is where Tetsuo is being forced to become part of this universe. This, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a universe. It's like the yeah. birth of the universe, as they described it. It's hard to explain. I think the way the kids said it is that they can choose to create their own reality. And Akira comes back and he takes Tetsuo away to be a part of that reality and they might come back one day. Yeah, that sounds about right from what I understood about it. He, Thanks, guys. So Tetsuo, catch you the chat. Yeah, it. Tetsuo is just not he's not mature enough to handle to handle his power. And because right. his power is so exponentially more powerful than all of theirs, there's no other choice but to remove him from that reality. Otherwise, yeah, he probably would have kept growing in, in and, the size and of the blob and overcome everything. Form, that, I think that baby flesh form would have probably encompassed everything if they didn't, uh, you know, I, and the reason why that whole thing started was because they destroyed the Akira jars. Yep. Yeah. I think that's uh, what it was. 
I, I think the kids even like they were trying to stay out of it. And then they went in there to save uh, Canada. And oh, I think there was one more person that had the went Colonel got. Uh, the Colonel I thought they already too. like uh, it was, teleported uh, it the was Colonel a... out before that. It was Kai he, they, or K. Was it K? It was K. K wasn't there. Kauri was there, but she got. Yeah, K was there, but she yeah, Kauri was she got, squished. She got Squished. Poor Cowrie. No, poor, yeah. poor Cowrie. Let me bring yeah, in Charlie, gets, Charlie the she, Unicorn's like comment the here. Sorry, she's guys. nearly the victim of a rape, and then they kill her at the end. I'm like, seriously? Well, that's it. Can't, this can't got rated. Can't, can't you be nice to this character? Oh, no, bro, just serious. looking at that. This on Netflix Japan, it got rated like violence and sexual violence. And it's just that one little scene where you see Cowrie, like, um, the, one of the they biker punch gangs her in grabs. They rip punch off her, pull her shirt. Sure, and the, the 80 moment it had to have an 80 moment in there didn't it yeah. <laughs> guys but sorry let me bring you back to this comment it's a great comment here from charlie the unicorn who's spent time in japan and in uh, korea as far as i know japanese folklore features the onikuma a demon oh. bear that walks upright milk can also symbolize immortality because it represents renewal and rebirth interesting I love that oni kuma oni is like devil demon and kuma is bear so the, the demon or devil bear <laughs> So cool. Just just killed the conversation with that. So sorry about that. Kuma the bear. So, okay. We've um, <laughs> we've been going for an hour and a half. Um, if you guys are good, we can we can start to wrap things up, if that's all right. So should we get the um, final thoughts? A kind of recommendation or a, a summary about this movie. Would you recommend it to people? Would you say people who've got into anime, you know, over the last say ten years? Because this is old now, isn't it? To be honest, it's an old anime. So Thirty five years with, this um, year. Brandon. Brandon the anime guy. What would you say? Absolutely. This is a must watch at the very yeah. least one time. Now, as far as, uh, as far as ratings go, let me, let me show you what I've given, given as far as a rating on my official anylist.co list. So if you pull up the screen there, I have given it a nine reasons. It is a piece of cinematic history. It is a piece of classic storytelling. It is the dystopian nightmare that we all fret, especially for Japan, you know, having the fear of the bomb dropped on you again. Even though it's not what happened, that's what's led to believe to happen. And four, this story is just so powerful. Even in its most synthesized, broke down, simplistic form that this is compared to the manga, absolutely. This is a must watch at least once, and it's a must own. So. Definitely go get it and definitely get the manga of it. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I've just been trying to quickly get your channel. I mean, the, everyone's channel is in the description, but I wanted to put it in the chat as well. I will do that in a second. And also, shout out Zax. Zax, you sexy star. How do you say exponential power in Japanese? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Thank you very much for your, um, your donation, Zax. I really appreciate it. I've got to drop a clip for Zax, and there can only be one clip for Zax because he's a big fan of this movie as well as I am. Excalibur. That's great summary, Brandon. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Ronin, Matt, Ronin66, how about you? Would you recommend it? I have a hard time recommending it for a few reasons, mainly because there is a lot of disjointedness in it. And after just reading one volume of the manga, it is bit like it, it's it's not a complete story, and it, it's really hard to look at. And but the animation alone is enough to watch it. But for newer watchers, I couldn't point them towards it because I think there's a lot of themes and ideas in it that would probably turn people off to anime. So I would say it's more for a seasoned anime watcher and someone who is, who understands anime a little bit more than just like, Hey, here, watch this because this, it, I mean, it is one of the best top anime movies that you're going to be, that you can hand somebody, but it probably needs to be one that you watch later on down your anime journey. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's great. That's a great summary. And yeah, I, I agree with that. I think you need to have a bit of a build up first, don't you, to get into it. If you start off with this, you're probably going to like run, run screaming to the hills, aren't you? <laughs> a little yeah. bit. I guess we were built of stronger <laughs> stuff back in uh, the 80s than, than some of the snowflakes today. It was something that uh, you were looking for anything anime and it right. was like hey this movie let's watch this it's anime and yeah definitely so it, yeah but yeah like uh, probably kids from the last 10 years that have just gotten into anime uh, I, I don't know I, I because anime even from the last 10 years you don't get stuff like this no there's nothing even close to this these days yeah, I mean, the closest thing would, what, what would you say, Brandon? Probably be Demon Slayer would be maybe the most, I guess, hardcore thing out. <laughs> and that's still kind of pushing it. Man, I I, I don't even think of these two in the same league. Yeah, no, Man. I'm with you on that. But I'm, I'm cool. like thinking of all the big stuff that's been out in the last 10 years. And like yeah, De- it's... Demon Slayer, my hero, they're very good story wise, but. Like if you're looking They're for TV like, 14 level stuff. Yeah. If you're looking for something like this, uh, you're not going to get this. I mean, I mean, we, we had what this Ninja scroll fist in the North star, like just all that kind of stuff. The massive violence. Yeah. They just yeah. don't, they don't create anything close to that in terms of the violence. And uh, let me, let me come back to me in just a second. I got to think about that. Okay, there might be a show. No Maybe problem. So. I'm trying to think as well. I'm trying to like think of movies, of them. and they're all like kind of older ones. Skipping things like Ghost in the Shell because it's it's going back too long. But maybe something like um, Perfect Blue or Paprika. But again, you know they're oh, they're Perfect going back, Blue aren't they? Great. Yeah, those Fantastic were like movies. early two thousands. Yeah. Yeah, late nineties. Perfect 90s Blue. Movies, never yeah. heard of that. Oh, <laughs> like, dude, like. <laughs> Me neither. I just saw it in a comment. It's like oh, I'm going to say Perfect Blue. You know, like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fantastic. It's dark. It's psychological. It's weird. It's creepy. It's dreamlike. It's sexual. All the things that I oh, like. Oh yeah. It's basically like if uh, Britney Spears decided she wanted to stop being a pop singer and become an actress, but then lost herself to her fans. Actually, it's kind of exactly like the way Britney Spears. Grew up. <laughs> no way. Yes. Yeah. Jeez. All right. There, That's a good point. there is one. There is one show that I can think of that. It's got the it's got the visceral gore down right, and it has it's got more than just the blood sport to it. It actually sh- it actually has the bone, the sinew, the the innards, and all that stuff. It's Chainsaw Man. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of this particular anime, Chainsaw Man does get that right. They did I, that 100 okay. percent right. Okay. Yeah, I, I can agree to that. And then just for the silly violence, Akiba made war because I can. <laughs> it's always a good day to talk about the Akiba made wars. Oh, so good. <laughs> On that topic, guys, have you seen, and Brandon, I'm sure you probably have, and I'm, I'm asking a silly question, but um, the, the most recent, it's a few years ago now, but the Devil Man Cry Baby on Netflix. I have not. Oh, yeah. A bit naughty. I, it's a bit horror themed. It's very sexual as well. Just warning, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen Devil Man. I've seen like the, the 80s yeah. LVA for Devil Man. Yeah. Now that's, I, I mean, what the first episode basically starts out in a uh, an adult club and people getting drunk and drugged, and it basically looks like an acid trip. And then a guy, basically the devil goes on a rampage with a freaking Uzi in the club. <laughs> no, I I haven't crazy. seen that. Uh, although uh, there was one show that maybe could have been as good as the mm-hmm. as the manga but it uh it got netflix sized and that is bastard oh yeah it ah. got uh, it got screwed yeah cuz i i love yeah. the whole the whole idea of you know uh, hardcore what was it hard hardcore death metal what hold on one yeah. second. let me get the actual name of it the here. characters are all like based in the the lands based on like metal albums and metal bands yes isn't it? heavy metal dark yeah. fantasy the creator of it was a massively huge metal nerd so you get you know yeah. spells that are called oh. venom mega death call down the calling on the name of Whoa. Dave Mustaine oh. and, all, <laughs> and all that other stuff all of that was there all that was present but the animation and the uh uh let's say the uh, the lack of uh 
uh, certain anatomy parts when they should have been there and and from what i understand should have been shown it it breaks it it there it it does break part of this and but it's as close it's as close as you're going to get to that mm, it's a good uh, call it's Brand, a good shout out yeah brandon you're about to have on t-shirt historian uh, yep. at some point right t-shirts uh, coming on tomorrow definitely get him to talk about this because i did a stream or a show with him uh right before this came out and he had some massive knowledge about this yeah he's he's massive into all the 80s stuff but then again he's he's right in that uh right in that age bracket with right right there with you gray just he's a little <laughs> little younger than you but not by much so he's he's a yeah he's an 80s aficionado and a massive fist of the North Star fan. Now there, okay, that Ooh, the nice, manga of that nice. would be perfect for this. It falls into that same era, that same thing. The TV series wasn't okay. too bad, but the newer OVAs that they did, they're finally mm. getting a Blu-ray release. We're finally starting to, we're going to have a more complete fist of the North Star OVA as opposed to what they did with the movie and a lot easier to watch than the old TV series because let's face it 150 episodes of an 80s uh, TV series is hard to do even though it's massively violent in, in its own respect Dempsey's talking about Castlevania the anime did you see that on Netflix I did good. watch first the first season. two seasons and then part of the third season and I stopped yeah me too no way I watched the first part of the second and I kind of I don't know why I just dropped out yeah, the second season was perfect because they actually go, you know, they they fulfill the mission. But then after that, it's like, what do you do? And then I lost interest. But they're supposedly doing a new one, and it's based upon Richter. Ooh, good night, Nosferatu. Yes. By the way, Nosferatu. Oh, yes, me. Good night, man. See you, Nosferatu. So yes, that's gonna. Hopefully, this new Castlevania series is going to be sick. They're they're going to the right timeline. They're they're sticking mm. close to you know they're going to. They're going to Richter, which is the Rondo of Blood. And the next one in the series was Symphony of the Night. Oh. So cool. this this uh it has the potential to be to be anything and everything that I was looking for. I wasn't expecting to start with Trevor Belmont. Basically, you know, Castlevania 3. I wasn't expecting that. Mm. I am I even though it's still Netflix, you still have to be tepid about it. I hope that it's really good. Neporeal, are you okay? Are you okay, man? Yeah. <laughs> Good. You're looking sleepy. Guys, if you need to balance, it's fine. I know I said we're wrapping things up, but it's great to get your your anime recommendations seriously. I appreciate that. And I hope people you know, can take note of those back home and check out some of these series, not just Akira, because it is an old film now, but it's so good. And watching it compared to some of the more recent stuff, some of the 3D animated stuff, it just it blows my mind. It really does. Yeah. Okay, so before we finish up, because I'm going to finish now, let's go around the panel. Uh, Canada, Canada Poriel. What have you got coming up soon? I believe you'll be doing a few streams on. Is it Wheel of Time? I didn't and... even give my recommendation. I didn't say. Oh, come on, go for it. Give your recommendation. Or not. Go for it. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like you, if I mean, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, when it comes to you know anime, I mean, mm. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in the middle on this. I think that um, I think you need to have seen enough. Um, anime see enough especially violent more more violent more mature stuff to be mm -hmm. ready for something like akira because akira akira is very like it holds no punches like things that so many so many bad things happen to people and it's like <laughs> you see a dude die in an alley of a heart attack and he's and he's got pills and he's like Ugh. and he's just like drooling the pills out of his mouth as he's dead and then they show a girl getting punched in the face and having her having her her blouse ripped to the point where you see her you know her her stuff and it's i mean this is a brutal movie and you see like you see, you see a lot of brutal things happening and the movie does it really well but it's not for the faint of heart you have to you have to be ready for it and it, it, it just it keeps building as as the movie progresses there's so many things going on there's so many layers to this movie it's ridiculous um is it a complete story it tries to be but uh, i mean mm. that's why that's why it's it's it was good to have the the author of the source material as the director of this film which is yeah. very very rare thing to have so so you have someone who knows the story pretty well now you have you have a bunch of freaking freaking you know 
Zoomers or millennials who have inherited, who have grew up with franchises, and then they just try to freaking disregard what comes before and just write what they want to write. And oh, and then and then they 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 use the name just to sell their just just to sell, and it's uh, it's shit. It's total shit. But this is a great. This is definitely something I would definitely recommend. But this is not something for a newer anime fan. This is definitely something for someone who's been watching anime and mature stuff for a while, who can handle the toxic '80s, you know, because you know we have to, we all have to, you know, deal with toxicity, and the '80s was, you know, as toxic Every as single be. day. <laughs> and you know what? Toxicity is entertaining. I tell you what, Napoleon, your barmy in the chat was saying he um, he disagrees with not with uh, not being able to start with this. He started with this and he loved it, and he's got on from there. So good to hear I that. Did not, I did not quite get into this right away. It, it, it took me years to get into this right away. Me it too. Took me to years be, to, to get be into honest. This. Me too. Like at first first saw this, I had no idea what the hell was going on. Yeah, but it was it was entertaining seeing like all the the violence was entertaining. I'll say that. Shout out to uh, 70s in the chat. That 70s rock fan, great to see you, mate. I hope you're good. I hope you're Genki. While, while I've got him here, let me just drop a quick clip for 70s. There can only be this. There can only be. It's better to burn out than to fade away. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll, baby. <laughs> great to see you, man. No problems here, by the way. As I say, there are links in the, uh, the description. I'll make sure they're there and... Please subscribe to all these wonderful people. If you're not, if you're not, come on. Of course you are. What are you talking about? What do you want me to? Do you want me to say what I got going on or something? Is yeah, something... let's do it. Then let's go around. The, let's go around the horn. So, no Poriel, what's coming up for you? All right. Well, I got two things tomorrow, so I have to do a lot oh. of pre preparation. So, I am going to be on the White Cloaks channel tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the second half of Book One of uh, Lord of the Rings or the Fellowship of the Rings. So, it's going to be covering. The chapter seven, the, the in the house of Tom Bombadil, all the way oh, to chapter twelve, Tom. end of book one, which is the flight to the Ford, which is you know mm. where you know Frodo is being chased one last time by the the Dark Riders and oh well, god, so good, yeah. So that's that's one that's that's I'm gonna be on with them tomorrow, and then right after that I'm doing my own Trek Corio with the Golden Age Geek again because he's watching Star Trek for the first time, the original series. Oh, and we're going to cover another episode another one? of season one that we didn't talk about last time. So <laughs> that's nice. what and that's what's going on with me tomorrow. And on Sunday, me and Steve, Prophet of the Dragon, we're going to be dual streaming our us game uh, us playing uh, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. Oh, awesome! Very nice. Awesome. Your gaming brother at the moment, isn't he, Steve? Fantastic. The Kurgan, my hero, says 70s. And also, Nepora is going to be doing um, a season three review of Picard coming up in the next weekend, I think. Yeah, and, uh, every fr I mean, um, almost every Friday because they're, they, I think they, they drop episodes on Thursdays or Friday mornings or something. I so, think, yeah. yeah. So, and the time difference for me every, be tricky. Everybody one. I've been listening to has been saying Picard season three is really, really good. So, I cautiously have to optimistic to Nepora. myself. <laughs> Matt's laughing in the below us. Yeah, it's like, oh god, here we go again, right? Because I tell you what, season two, I couldn't even finish it. Season one was ridiculous. Season two, I gave it a chance, stopped watching halfway through. But I can't. I can't. I tried watching one. them again. I can't. <laughs> can't so. do it. Can't do season, it. Can't I've, heard, I've heard season three has world building. Characters have arcs. There's no really <laughs> high stakes, and um, and this and the trailer was deceitful. That there's no, more, way more to it. There's 70s. more to it. There's more. I know. I'm joking. It does look good. I, I I kind of half trust Robert Meyer Burnett. I'm a big fan of him in the past. I don't know. He's with his John Campier kind of thing. I'm not really sure anymore. But he said it's amazing. I've also heard Dave Cullen Napoleon yep. talking about it, saying he's yep. seen it and it's very very good. It's yep. a return to form. We'll yep. see. Are these positive reviews? I see your part me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's before we let's stop waffling. Sorry, sorry guys. I know I said we're wrapping things up. Um, Matt, running sixty six. We're going down clockwise. What have you got um, coming up soon on your channel? Uh, let's see. I've got some game in this week. Well, today because it's now Saturday where I'm at. Oh, um, yeah. So we got some game in today. Uh, going through the uh, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 3 and uh, my not anime gaming on Sunday and then uh, stream on Wednesdays. Uh, normally anime news and uh, the craziness that surrounds it. Awesome. That sounds cool. 
As I said, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. Every every subscriber helps, as we know, don't we, Napoleon and Brandon? Mm-hmm. That it does. <laughs> huge. It's huge. Huge. I was trying to do Nick Weiser. Huge. Can't do it. Can't do it. Okay, Brandon, the anime guy. Again, thank you, mate, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Bringing your awesome anime knowledge and your clips as well. What have you got coming up on the YouTube that YouTube thingy? Well, tomorrow at 12 o'clock Eastern time, I've got the T-shirt historian coming on. We're going to talk the 80s for two hours. And then at uh, 4 o'clock Eastern, I'm going to be on with the Legion of Memers. So that'll be, uh, that'll be a lot of fun talking anime with uh, people that are not uh, fully into it, but uh, it's going to be fun. And then let's see what else have I got going on. I'll probably be doing some modding here and there in a few places during the evening. Sunday is off, and then Monday started over again with uh, with uh, Annie Mondays, which is the news roundup show that I now do, and I've been having fun doing that. That's been a pretty good one. And then schedule, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, typically is when I do Anime Guy After Dark, and 10:05 uh, Eastern time is typically when I broadcast on Monday and Wednesday, or let's see, Monday and Friday, and maybe Wednesday, but. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. It was it was really good to be able to watch this again and add it into there. There is there is one more show that I do want to give to you to watch. That's from this past season. That the English dub is way more graphic in its language compared to the original, and that's reincarnated as a sword. The English dub, if they're dropping the f bombs on almost every episode, whereas in the standard in the original, it wasn't until the seventh episode that uh that happens wow you just said reincarnated as a sword and the sex box yes. showed up what's going on ridiculous <laughs> what i have just put it in the chat um there we go yeah uh, reincarnated as a sword thanks for that recommendation yeah. it's Andrew, really good cool. i really like it. it it's a lot of fun so no way as well a recommendation for the english dub over the japanese that's good to hear nice one okay ladies and gentlemen Boys and girls, yeah, right. Thank you so much for watching this long. We uh, really enjoyed talking about Akira. Akira! Canada! Canada! Tetsuo! <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. It's been great. Great dropping clips as well. And yeah, we'll finish up here. But guys, hang around for a few minutes. When we finish, we'll have a quick chat in the, the studio, as I say, before we go away. So again, I'm going to finish with a ninja clip because I love ninja. Uh, not my usual good night clip. Here we go. Let's finish with this. <laughs>